All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it has been forever since we uploaded, almost five months, and you guys are finally gonna get back into what we've been working on. Uh, long story short, why haven't we been uploading to YouTube? One, we have so much shit going on, which that hasn't changed. Still have way too much going on. Uh, but two, we have some exciting stuff that we wrapped up, uh, so we wanna try to get you guys updated on that. Uh, but the purpose of this video is to start the next uh, build that we wanna document. So we've been working on this one in the shadows, uh, quite a bit. It's been hanging around for quite some time and we just got it back from the paint shop and as you can see It's looking good. So PAB did this one as well uh, Loch Ness uh, The same people who painted Loch Ness painted the 454 and we're just getting ready to test fit the custom build specialty wheels um, All the suspension and brakes aside from brake lines are done. You can see some holes in the body I need to be trimmed out a little bit, but that is for the uh, custom exhaust that we did. Full Ride Tech coilover conversion. Full custom axle that we did. Front end has some monster Wilwood six piston. QA1 coilover conversion on the front. Badass build, especially wheels. We actually, uh, Nate, the owner of the truck, picked out a different wheel and then switched to these, and we're very happy because we like these ones a lot better. Uh, custom powder coating all picked out by him. Steve, roll that one over here too. So this is a standard setup. Wow, that difference is huge. Um, I can't even get them in there. So that is a 24 by 10 on the right with a roughly 30 inch tall tire. And then the left is a 22 by eight and a half with a 29 inch tall tire, or a 28 inch tall tire, I'm sorry. Wow, those are sick. So that's what we're gonna try to get to fit on this thing. Um, we have the big block, the 4L80, all the front steering components are all replaced. So we'll work on that stuff later. Uh, but for right now, we wanna get it off the gunny wheels, which are temporary mock-up wheels and onto this, because with the little wheels that were on it, it literally sits like two inches off the ground. So we gotta put the real wheels on it so we can at least roll it around easier. Uh, got the front all taped off, which is gonna be beautiful. Not something that you guys would have expected us to do. Uh, once we get this thing on the wheels, we'll push it outside probably, or at least show you the paint and body changes that we did. Uh, comment down below if you've already noticed some, and maybe if, as you see the walk around footage on it, see if you can point out the details, and then at the end of the video, we'll obviously show you how many custom uh, touches we had PAB do to it. Uh, but for right now, let's see if these wheels and tires fit, because uh, we're all pretty pumped to see what they look like. All right, guys, this thing is outside, and it is unbelievably sick. Let's just get right to it. I can't, I can't even. I love that you can see all the rear suspension work through the wheel. That is so dope. So this, so this is going to be our target ride height for this build. Obviously it does not have any engine and trans in it yet. Are you guys starting to notice some of the changes? made to this thing as far as body work is concerned what do you see i mean too sick Approved? I don't we'll know. clear with this. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. What were you going to say, Dan? I was say, we'll clear with a spacer and turning. The front? Yeah. Yeah, because it's gonna, we're going to have to keep the. We have to keep the wheel well lip above the tire anyway. Yeah. Like that. 
Which is good because it sits level like this. Yeah. It's higher than I thought. Yeah, uh, same. Huh? It's higher than I thought it was going to be. I think it's because the wheels are so bad. Thing. Yeah, the, di the diameter of the wheels adds so much. Yeah. If you put, if you wanted to have it like nasty, you put like 20 dates or 26s or something, I bet it'd be like, like it was. I wish the phone was sucked in more, but you can't. Right. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it doesn't even look bad. I mean, if you get close, yeah, but from here, I think it's pretty sweet. Uh, if you were to paint the lady, well, you're so used to yours being. But mine are ugly. <laughs> mine are ugly. That doesn't look that bad. All right, so there's your preview of what's going to be a big build that we're going to try to finish up because we have a lot of the heavy lifting done on that thing. So probably next week we'll be putting the engine and transmission in and exhaust, and uh, then we'll start worrying about wiring. We got to do a stereo and stuff like that on it. Uh, but now we're going to move on to some of the no prep stuff that we're doing, uh, which is going to be our long travel suspension that came in for a couple cars we've been doing some work on. Uh, but I'm going to help these guys move this, and then we'll, uh, we'll jump to that. All right, so the first thing that we're putting the long travels on is this nitrous setup. So this is not the struts that were on it. These are actually off the tramp. Uh, these are the old Strange 10 ways. But the travel was kind of similar. I just have the front end jacked up. I'll just kind of give you an idea. That's, that's as far as it goes. And that is with the shock as far down as it can go. So we're gonna put the TRSs on, see what it looks like. Um, I think we're gonna have a problem with the front steering linkage. We're gonna have to come up with some kind of misalignment spacer in the front bump steer, but we'll worry about that once we get it there. I do have to raise the ride height of this whole car to get it to where I think it's gonna work, and I still have to put weight in the back. Uh, but for now, we're gonna switch the struts out, make sure those are tight, and then start raising the rear right, right raising the ride height in total, um, and then at least my plotting will be where I wanted it. Uh, and then once, so once I have the right height up, then the suspension points will be where I kind of think that they might work. And then I got to figure out how to put a bunch of weight in the back that's removable. Um, then this car can go home or start testing. Uh, it seems to have a head gasket problem, unrelated to anything we did, obviously, but it smokes a lot on startup after it sits and kind of smells like coolant. So I don't think we're going to see this one tested right away. Uh, but after we get this one done, we're going to put the long travels on Zach's and then, uh, and that is going to get pretty much tested right away. So. All right. All right, so we have our first set of TRS long travels installed on the Nitrous SN95 that we're working on. And you guys saw the before, I showed you the before. I'll compare them with the after, and I got some pictures too. But this shit is like the grave digger. Wild, wild. And then start raising the rear right. There's at least three added inches of travel on that. It looks totally ridiculous. So now what matters is that it works. Um, so I'm getting ready to put it on the ground. I'm gonna start setting the ride height on all four corners and uh, probably put on the scales again. I would be curious, maybe I'll figure out a way to rig the front. Cause I'd be curious to know what the rear weight bias is when you're at max travel. I know what we have a target weight that we're trying to achieve on the back tires. Um, and I'm curious how that transfers to it once it's all the way up in the front. Uh, so I have it all twisted up right now on one jack, trying to get the other side done. I'm gonna put it down and uh, start playing with ride height. All right, you can see the white car's back on the lift. So we got the SN95 front end done. Um, the last project I really have for that and this is I have to figure out how to put massive amounts of weight in the back end and in various locations. The white SN95 only has a few suspension geometry locations. So I kind of have an idea what I want to try with that. Um, so that's pretty much all done. I just have to figure out how to put like 300-ish pounds towards the back end of it. And then the, the S197, this has the same thing. So we did get long travels for this as well. 
So we got some long travels for this. Although the S197 requires a longer shock. So this isn't as drastic of an increase. But these are the couple problems that we've ran into with the long travel setup on this car. All right, number one, overall shock length. This car has a lot of exposed shaft on the top when it's installed. So even though they make the shock longer, there's still a lot of wasted space at the top of the shock. So we're gonna come up with the caster camera plate solution that might resolve that, and we have to do it basically tomorrow. Uh, issue number two, at full droop, which this is not, we ran out of room with the tie rod here. Uh, it, these only have a max of about 13 degrees, and 13 degrees is from max to max. So you really only have seven degrees of misalignment before we start to bind on this. So now with the long travels on, the bump steer kit would not allow the front suspension to drop far enough. And um, we want to make it drop even further. So we have a solution that we're working on with this. We found some pretty trick uh, rod ends. We're going to try that tomorrow. Um, nothing really to see over here. Otherwise, we should be good with everything. We checked that the brake lines are, are good. So we checked that the brake lines are gonna work on both cars, that's okay. The bump steer on the SN95 is fine. Uh, it actually uses a cheaper quality rod end, which in this case is okay. Uh, and it's much thinner in the middle and it allows for about 25 degrees uh, of radial movement. So that is gonna work out just fine. Um, we've already tested that. You can still steer it at full. I did have to move the uh, travel limiters, so I kind of had to custom make something that would go into the sway bar mount location. That worked out good. That car's pretty much good, once again, for weight. Um, and then this one is weight. I'm gonna do one last thing on this thing tonight. I'm gonna try to figure out the front wheel speed sensor issue that hasn't been working. Um, so I'm gonna try to fill that a little bit, and then that's gonna wrap up today. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, good to see you guys again. Thank you guys for checking in. Uh, I'm glad to be back. And I'm not sure what my upload schedule is going to be moving forward. I'm not sure the organization of which I'm going to be doing them. So we'll play it by ear and we'll see how uh, the channel evolves over the next few months uh, for the rest of this race season. All right, guys, second half of this video is finishing up the no prep front suspension on the white three valve. So if you're following this channel because of the three valve build, we haven't really covered a whole lot since it's been finished. So we're going to do that in the future. But the question is, did we just make the long travel suspension better? Uh, we realized working with Jeff last night uh, from TRS that basically the Viking front struts that were sold to us from Viking is, is essentially the same as a Fox body length. But the distance from the top of the strut tower to the spindle is longer on an S197 than a Fox. So going from a QA1 shock to the Viking, we lost like an inch and a half, maybe two. Then when we switched it to the Viking, I'm sorry, now that we converted the Viking to long travel, we got three inches back essentially. Not quite as much as we were hoping for, especially after that SN95 long travel conversion that you guys saw earlier in the video. That made our hopes really, really high for the front travel that we were going to get out of Zach's car. Uh, so forward till today, we are getting ready for the streetcar brawl tomorrow, and we've decided we were going to try to get more weight in the back and more travel in the front, and we came up with a solution. Um, one earlier, I told you one solution of our no prep dilemma was that heim joint. So this is the high travel heim joint. I don't know where, we don't, we don't have an old one off yet, but the old one would probably only travel about this far, a little more than that, like that, before it'll run out. Now we get like an extra 20 degrees. So we will be plenty fine. This will no longer be our limiting factor on this suspension setup. I mean, you can just imagine the tie rod at that angle. That's just ridiculous. That's some off-road Jeep stuff. So I don't like this style heim joint on street street cars because I bent one on my notch back once. Um, but this car is not going to see nearly as many miles as my notch did when it was street worthy. Uh, number two, designed a K-member spacer for the S197. If you happen to be watching this and you're interested in the budget-friendly uh, long travel conversion kit, we will offer this to you. And it's basically this and the bracket that you need to bolt it to the strut tower and the fancy heim joints that we're talking about for the front steering. Um, soft, that's a soft product release. All right, now check this out. Is this all the way down right now? Huh?
All right, so this is with the long travel and the budget kit that we oh, came up with. We gotta put a wheel on that just for uh, for a better visual. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. Now we have SN95 results. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think so. with the cellular device. Dude, this thing's gonna look ridiculous like that. Here's a video of me taking a picture. Right. Might actually wear out a set of front tires go hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is what we're doing to the front of the white car. We have to move some lower bar angles uh, to some different calculations. Uh, we're gonna do that last. But for now, we're gonna get the front struts on there. We're gonna quasi align it, set the bump steer so it's kind of halfway okay, and uh, then get the rear suspension and weight ready for streetcar brawl. Uh, I am purchasing a shit ton of lead, but we're not gonna have that for tomorrow. So we're going to be ratcheting strap, ratchet strapping sandbags all over the trunk. And then we're gonna kind of strap them together so they can't really move easily. Um, it's gonna be ghetto, but we need to put about 400 pounds on the trunk of this car to get it to work halfway decent on that surface. So stay tuned for that. All this is gonna to come to fruition tomorrow and let's get back and finish it up. All right guys, that wraps up this video that we uh, showed you guys all the long travel stuff that we installed and obviously the sneak peek at the 454. Uh, we are heading to US 41 and I'm editing the video that you guys just watched. Um, and I just wanted to close out the video, say thanks again for watching and checking in. Uh, we're happy to be back on the channel. And make sure you smash subscribe and uh, stay tuned to your notifications because we will have the US-41 testing video out uh, shortly hereafter. So we're in construction with the uh, Great White Buffalo, which is Zach and his big trailer, and uh, going through traffic. So it's a good time, uh, but we'll see you guys in the next video.